All right, so we are still in 5.2 log functions and their graph. We are finishing with the ln graph. So ln is the same thing as what? Log base e. So this would be the same thing as log base e of x minus 2. So remember with logs, we have a vertical asymptote, we have a restricted domain, and we have an x-intercept. So your quiz is going to ask for those three things on your log graphs. And then on an exponential graph, it's going to ask for your horizontal asymptote, your range, and your y-intercept. So remember a couple of things. One is our vertical asymptote comes from what's in the parentheses here. So if I set that equal to 0, so x minus 2 equals 0, I get my vertical asymptote is at x equals 2. So I've got a vertical asymptote running through x equals 2. That I know already. Then I'm going to learn is my graph on the right-hand side or the left-hand side of this graph. It normally, logs normally have a graph that looks like this. Okay, It's increasing as you move from left to right. It passes through the x-intercept and that's your, I mean the x-axis and that's your x-intercept. And then our domain is typically zero to positive infinity, but it shifts with our horizontal asymptote. The second thing, hopefully you remember about logs, is when we're graphing, we plug in for what? Which variable do we plug in for when we're graphing logs? The y. So when we set up our t-chart, which we're gonna do, we plug in for y instead of x with logs. So I'm going to take this log expression and I'm going to convert it into exponential. So there's nothing in front of the log, there's nothing outside of those parentheses, which means I can do that now. Though e comes over and picks up the y, would drop off leaving the x minus 2. So if I wanted to solve for x, I would get e to the y plus 2. e to the y plus 2 like that equals x. So now there's two ways to do this. One that's a little bit more accurate than the other. The most accurate way is to actually use your calculator. Not most accurate, but more accurate than the other. It is to use your calculator and plug in negative 1, 0, and 1 as your exponent. So I'd get e to the negative 1 plus 2, e to the 0 plus 2, and e to the first plus 2. So second ln is where the e is, negative 1.367 plus 2, that's 2.4. So I'm going to round to the nearest tenth because I'm not going to get any more accurate than that on that graph. e to the 0 is what? One. 1 plus 2, which is 3. e to the first is e, right, which is 2.7 plus 2. 4.7. So technically the only one we really needed the graph, the calculator for is that first one. And if I didn't have a calculator, I would approximate E to be 3. And so I'd say 3 to the negative 1 plus 2, which is 1 third plus 2. And I'm graphing 2 and 1 third. So it's so close. I mean, look at it, it's the difference of 2.3 to 2.4 that we can approximate it if we don't have the calculator. So if you were to get an LN graph on your quiz, you won't have a calculator. To find that, you'll approximate it as log base 3. So when we're doing the ones like this, we take it and we put it into exponential. Mm -hmm. And then from exponential, we take it and we like plot the points. We, you plug in for y instead of x. That's one difference, right? On, on exponential, we plug in for the x. But in log, we plug in for the y. So we plug in for y because we're solving for y? Because the y is the exponent here. So if the x was the exponent, like so if x equals log e parentheses. It won't. It won't be. The reason you would plug in to, so if it said y equals 3 to the x, you plug in for x. If it's y equals log base 3 of x, we convert and then plug in for the y. So if we're solving for y, how come we're plugging in for Because when you do logs and you convert to exponential, 
the y becomes the exponent. You can't plug into here. So log e solve for y exponentially e solve for x? Sure. After you put it in exponential yeah, form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, because log you always put it to exponential. Correct. So technically you always solve it for x. Correct. Okay. Yep. Correct. Yep. Which if you didn't have a calculator, you'd have to do. So like we have ours with us, so we can do e to the negative one. But if we didn't, we'd have to say that e is about three. Three to the negative one would be one third. Mm -hmm. And then we do it that way. So now I'm going to graph these. 2.4 and negative one. Three zero and 4.7 and one. And my graph looks like that. So I already have the vertical asymptote. What's the domain on this? Good. Two to infinity. It starts at the vertical asymptote, and my graph points to the right, so it goes to positive infinity. And then my x-intercept I could either get from my graph, or I go to my t-chart, and I get that middle point, because that's where y is 0, and I get my x-intercept. So Quiz. We have to know the vertical asymptote, mm -hmm. the domain, mm -hmm. and the x or y intercept. This one will be the x intercept. And then if it's exponential, it's a horizontal asymptote. It's, be the y. it's the range and it's the y intercept. Wait, so it's x. Okay, no, we already went over this. So it's yep. exponential, it defines y, but if it's log, you find you have to put it into exponential for the end right so you'll find this one will have a horizontal asymptote this will, will have a restriction on the range and this one will have a y intercept and then this one has a vertical asymptote it has a restriction on the domain and it has an x intercept how come with log it couldn't be x equals log 3y that way it would be put into exponential y equals Say that again. Why with log, yeah. it couldn't be x equals log 3y. That way, when you put it into exponential, it'd be y equals 3y. I mean, technically, it could. But if it's a function, the y is f of x. So the, it's always by itself. And the x is always with the log. But like in the world of logs, those variables could be switched. Sure. What is it? It's just the inverse of an exponential. It's a different way to write an exponential function. So it's like a subfunction. It's called an inverse, to be very specific. But yeah, it's basically taking and switching the x and y's. Okay. Yeah. So it's, just, it's just to make it backwards for fun. Sure. I don't know. So Sorry. I guess we have to make it backwards for fun. It's just for fun. Yeah. Okay. Somebody made it up. It's my job to teach it to you. That's very fun. <laughs> All right, let's try another one. Correct. Why didn't it just put an E? Because it's just another way to write it. <laughs> it's two more letters. So why an N instead of an E if we know E is only E? Because it's log, so it's log of the natural base, which becomes natural log. E is called a natural base. Yeah, yeah. so base. it's log of the natural base, so they actually shorten it for you by calling it ln. They're trying to make it easier on you. Oh, okay, so, so n means natural base. n means log of a natural number. Yeah, yeah, log with the natural base, and the natural base is e. Okay, yes. so now that I know it means natural base. That's what ln is, log of the natural number, yeah, natural, or natural base. Now that I know it means natural, I just thought it was an n because it was an n for fun. Okay. I'm glad you gave us the disclaimer before class started. <laughs> okay, so now, before I even get into moving this around, there, I'm going to look at the, what's in the parentheses because that helps me to determine the, the vertical asymptote, right? 
So I get 2 minus x equals 0, which means x is actually equal to 2, right? I add the x to the other side. If I flipped it, subtract the 2, divide and multiply by negative 1, I still end up with x equals 2. That's my vertical asymptote. If I moved, oh, you moved the two right, I moved the x instead of the 2. If I move the 2, oh, okay. then I have to divide or multiply by negative 1. I thought you were, okay, I thought you were moving the x. No, no, no. It's one, one, one way or the other, right? Okay, so now again, I still have that vertical asymptote right there at 2. Again, I don't know if it's on the right or the left until I start plugging in points. So I'm going to take my log base E of 2 minus x. I'm going to convert it into exponential. So E comes over and picks up the y. Drops off, leaving 2 minus x. Now, if I want to solve for x, I'm going to subtract the 2, e to the y, minus 2 equals negative x. And then divide or multiply everything by negative 1. You can get a negative e. So the easiest way to do it is this. Because I can't make e negative, but I would make the result of that negative. Does that make sense? You can't have a negative natural number because then that's not yeah, it's just that you, ha if this is not the same as this, those are not the same thing. Oh, okay. Right? Okay. I get, okay. The negative is not on the E. The negative comes after you raise it to the exponent. So the, okay, so the negative is for the answer, not for the equation. Kind of. Yeah. Okay. I focus. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I be careful. It's not negative E, right? You don't raise negative e to the exponent. We get the exponent on the e, and then... You raise e to the exponent, and then multiply that by negative 1. Correct. Okay. 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 I get it. I'm so sorry for confusing people. I don't know if they were any less confused. All right. So x and y, negative 1, 0, 1. So I'm going to do negative, right, e to the negative 1 minus 2 or plus two if you do the negative already. So then I would do e to the negative one, which we said e was one, like three, e to the, or three to the one, negative one would be one third, right? So this is like one third plus two, and it becomes one and two thirds. Wait, why is it plus two and minus two? You can either look at it like this and do the inside first and then multiply it times negative, or you can distribute that negative so it would be a negative e plus 2. Just be careful and don't make the base negative. You have to raise e to the negative 1, then change it to be negative. Does that make sense? If e is like 2.7 away, how do you get 2? So we just round. We round e. We're here, right? We're good on this? It's the negative that throws you off? It's the expression that throws you off. I don't know. I mean, I know it, what you're saying. I just want to... So maybe this is easier. Do it now, and then multiply it by negative at the end. Yeah, okay. Like so e to the negative 1 minus 2 equals negative x. We just can't remember. We can't forget that it's a negative x, so we have to multiply by negative at the end. e to the negative 1, we said if we have a calculator, right, e is, we use a calculator. If we don't have a calculator, it's 2.7, so I would make this 1 over 2.7. But I don't want a decimal in my denominator. So we approximate e to be 3. So without a calculator, we approximate e to be 3. Oh, okay. So this becomes 3 to the negative 1 minus 2, 1 third minus 2, which is negative 1 and 2 thirds. That equals a negative x, though. So I have to change the sign to get that x. So like on the calculator, how would I make it like, like minus 2 and not like subtract 2 from the... Like, so you take arrow over so it's out of your exponent. So delete that. Oh no. Go ahead and close that. Close the parentheses on. Oh, okay. Negative 1. Close parentheses. Then do it. Oh, so, I have a question. Yeah. I threw on the calculator this morning, but I keep trying to type in answers, and it keeps giving me like e raised to a power whenever I type in an answer. It's like a simple thing. I think it's trying to tell me zeros. So tomorrow you're gonna remember your calculator, and then I'll show you whatever is going on. 
Because I would, I think it's because I was playing with the calculator and I think I messed up quite a bit, but <laughs> okay. I was typing on it and making words, but that's probably my fault. I was playing with There's the a reset computer. on your calculator. Find it and reset it. I don't know how to do that. I'll find the menu. You'll find it. There's a little thing on the back usually that says reset and it's a button you push. Just push it. Okay. Yep. All right, so now I got e to the zero minus two, and I'm again, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna save the negative for the end. So e to the zero is what? One. One, one minus two, times negative one equals negative x, so multiply the negative one at the end, and x equals one. Why would we oh, okay, we're doing the negative at the end. I did the negative at the end because we said the negative was what was confusing, so I'm just gonna save it till the end. So up here, instead of doing it this way, we're gonna keep this. Just remember you're setting it equal to negative x and not x. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? I think that might be easier. If not, I'll do it the other way, but I think it's easier. If we do it the other way, we would get negative one plus two equals x. Correct. Which is one equals x. Correct. Is it all right if we do like 1.6 or 1.7 instead of one and two thirds? Yeah, I mean, you're graphing this. You're never going to get that accurate. Yeah, the things that have to be 100% accurate are going to be your x-intercept okay. and your domain and your vertical asymptote. The okay. points are going to be a decimal point anyways. Okay, yeah. so for the quiz, we're going to have to graph it, but, like, look, we have to do the domain range, or not domain, like, x-intercept. Yep. Okay. One thing I've never understood, but I hope I understand today, is... I'm, I'm not sure that's going to happen, but we'll try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I was a betting person, <laughs> Audrey, I would not put that on today, but keep going. <laughs> um, I'm just going to try. My okay. heart is, <laughs> if you put parentheses and then a negative and then a number, if you put the parentheses, if you put the negative inside the parentheses, then, like, and then you put the E, and then you put the exponent with the, no, you put the exponent with the number in the parentheses then the negative... No, that's the same as this. Okay, and then if it's outside... No, but with the, with the exponent inside. That's... So these, well, no. So that's... So this is a positive nine. These are negative nines. Okay, so when it's outside, that means that you do the exponent right. and then the negative. Which is the same rule as if it's like this, because exponent comes before multiplication. So you have to do the exponent first, and then you multiply, because technically that's a negative one sitting there. So the only time when there's a negative, you get a positive if you're squaring it. Any even, yeah, any even exponent. Any yeah. even exponent is if it's parentheses with the negative, and then you put the exponent on the outside. Correct. Okay, because I just never got that. Well, I'm glad it happened today. I was not I was not expecting that. That just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. It's just so confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, so I, think, confusing. I think that she's doing good today, but she's confusing the rest of us, so just bear with it. <laughs> this is why my teachers never let me ask questions <laughs> in middle school. There was like, Audrey, if you have a question, you have to say after class, you cannot ask me in front of the class. <laughs> Oh, wait, I'm going the wrong way. Hang on. Sorry. All right, so now I'm plotting these points. One and two-thirds and negative one. One and two-thirds and negative one. One and zero. And point, negative point seven and one. So this is actually going back the other way, which should make sense because this is inverted. Like if I have a two minus x, it's a negative x plus two. It's inverted. So it's switching over that axis. That axis. Nope, I didn't follow any of what you just said. Of the plotting of the points or of the... I, you put the points on yeah. the line. So like if you go based off transformations, this is negative x plus 2, right? Yes. Which is normally a horizontal shift to the left, but there's a negative in the front of the x, so it's a reflection over the x-axis. Over the y-axis. Yep, that's yep. what I said. Oh. 
But if you just plot your points, it'll take care of it for you. So if you're not catching the, the transformation, it'll take care of it for you. I'll be honest, the one on your quiz does not have like, it's not as complicated. It doesn't have a reflection over. If you don't have to memorize it, you just have to graph it. Yeah. Can you do math? You don't have to memorize it, you just have to graph it? Yeah. So what's domain? Domain two, uh, yeah, so negative infinity comes first. Negative infinity to oh, two. Oh, oh, oh. How do you, I don't get that either. Left to right. Domain is left to right on my graph. So, this so is the this arrow is pointing that way, which is negative infinity. And it goes up to two without touching two because that's where your vertical asymptote is. So you do this. So wherever it's going, left. where it stops. Where it's coming from. Coming from, stops. To where it stops. Left to right. Left to where it's coming from. To where it stops. So from... Neg that which, so that's that's negative, negative infinity. Going down says two. Going left. Left. Yeah. Yeah. I don't left to right. Well, down and up would be range. Yeah. 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 All right. How about my x-intercept? Here's the easy part, right? One zero. One zero. Go to the middle of your coordinate. That is the literal one thing I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so the x-intercept is always going to be the same. No. Well, if if it's not. Like shifted. Wait, what? I don't even know what I did with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even following what I'm saying. Okay, let's look at this, right? Uh huh. Yes. So if it was just this part, it's log base two. So there's an, a vertical asymptote at zero because there's nothing here, right? And it would go like this, right? That's like a typical parent function of log. Okay, but it's one, it's at plus one. So everything just gets shifted up one. That's gonna change your x-intercept. So it's no longer up yeah, one, okay? That's what I can, but I think I meant. you're gonna find it. You're not even gonna stress about memorizing it because you're gonna find it. You have to find the points anyways. It's always the middle point. If you do negative one, zero, and one, it's always the middle point. So the x-intercept's the middle point. It's always the middle point from your T-chart if you do negative one, zero, and one. Oh, okay, yeah, exactly what I meant. All right, let's try this one since we didn't do log. We just did the LN, and then I'll, and then I'll let you try to work on that web assign. Wait, wait, this one, what if it's like, hold on. So what's the difference between this? If it has like a negative in front of the log. So that flips, I'll, I'll show you how to set that up in a second. Okay. What's the difference between these two? They're different numbers. Parentheses. Where the parentheses are. What is the plus one after the x2? Oh. Shifts it up. Does it change my horizontal asymptote? No. No, this horizontal asymptote is x equals zero. What? It's always what's next to the log, what's attached to the log. So the, what's attached to the base is just x. You said x so, so I said one. x equals zero and then I wrote one. Zero. So the one, because it's not in parentheses, is not attached to the x. Correct. It's a shift up, not left to right. This shifts left to right. So this is x equals negative 1. And I wrote horizontal, but it's vertical. Okay. Okay. Wait. Okay. No, wait. Okay. I think this makes sense. No, yeah. And then, like, okay, hold on. Let me change my paper. I need to make this a graph. <laughs> oh yeah, I have like every class. No, but I didn't. This didn't. Start. Don't don't distract her. Let her focus. This didn't start till. Sophia, go ahead. Sorry. Like, can you like ask a question? Like different. Oh, which made it You the difference of the equations. You mean like the transformation? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you're doing y equals the first part's plus or minus, right? Then it's log. Then it's x plus or minus a number here. Then it's plus or minus a number here. Very rarely do we get all of that in one, especially in log. But what's going to happen is, first of all, our parent function of log looks like this. I spell attach. <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? This is going to flip it upside down. So positive is normal. Negative flips it upside down. Here, positive shifts left, negative shifts right. 
and this changes the vertical asymptote and the domain. This shifts it up or down. Positive goes up, negative shifts down. So that, but that's like a general understanding of it. You're gonna always, like you cannot graph log based on shifts. You have to plug in those points for Y. So hopefully when you look at a log, that helps you kind of figure out what it should look like at the end. But you're always gonna have to plot points. So when you're plotting the points, hopefully that tells you, am I on the right track or not? No, but like That, so with so I'll go back to the two examples I wrote there. I'm gonna actually work them out. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, I'll, yeah, I'm gonna work them out. Yeah. So I think we did an example on Monday in which those didn't give us enough information, so we just did a couple more. Sometimes that helps. But the negative one, zero, and one will always give you your intercept because zero is your y. You just might have to, and the one on your quiz, that should be fine. You might have to, in the homework or something like that, maybe extend. And if you don't get that curve, kind of like we did with the exponential, if it's not enough of a curve, you could always plot more in. You're welcome. Yep. Because these are logs, it's going to be a vertical asymptote. Correct. And if it was an exponential, it would be horizontal. Correct. It's just like a rule that's a rule. Yep. Okay. Sorry, can you just go back to that explanation? It's just opposite. Can't really. The shift to the shift to the left. Um, I just don't even hear anything. I'm just confused with the exponential. Should I just like put it in the Maybe. All right, so I'm going to do the one on the left first. I'm going to do the, the yellow one first, and then I'll do the pink one. So before I convert this into exponential, this log has to be by itself, which means I have to move that plus one. So I do y minus one equals log base two of x. Now I can get into exponential. So the two comes over and picks up that whole thing. Drops off, x is on the other side. Yep. Did we learn this yesterday? This was Monday, yeah. This is Monday, yep. Okay, that's yep. why I took Why did we move the one first? Because you can't convert to exponential until the log is by itself. But why did yeah. we not move? Because the log is by itself for the other one. That's okay. In parentheses is okay. Added or subtracted outside the parentheses is not okay. <laughs> so now I get 2, negative 1 minus 1, 2, 0 minus 1, and 2, 1 minus 1. So 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth, 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half, and 2 to the 0 is 1. I'm sorry. So one fourth <laughs> negative one fourth negative one. Throw your friend under the bus. See if she sends you notes again. A like uh, half five. zero and one one. That's kind of how she pays attention in class too, though. She gets distracted. She does stuff, and then she comes back, and then I have to wait, and then she does it again. So it's not just you. Who? Yeah, Madison. Oh yeah, I was confused who we were talking about. I'm so confused today. I don't like this. I hate being confused. Oh, so, okay. So when we're doing negative exponents, you turn it into a fraction and then raise it to the power? Yeah. Okay. Just double checking. Yep. yep. Okay, so what's the domain here? <laughs> infinity. No. What's it called? One infinity. Very close, but no. Zero. Zero. It's wherever the inner the the vertical asymptote is, right? So our vertical asymptote is at zero. Oh yes, I see the middle numbers. 
No, that's this. That's that's the x-intercept. So then where is we? It comes from up here. Oh. So it comes from what's next to the log. Oh, yeah. So whatever. Yep. Set that equal to zero. So purple and then orange. Okay. I got it. No, yeah. As long as you get you, we're good. Then we take a picture, and then you should be to the right for asking yourself if the ruler ever is like attached to the ruler. Yep, and if there's no parentheses, it's zero. But if there is a parentheses, like the next one, right, the pink one, mm -hmm. there's a parentheses this time. And since it's just a positive one. So we literally set that equal to zero, and I would subtract the one, and I'd get x equals negative one, and that's my vertical asymptote. Oh, they gave names to the iPads now. <laughs> It's like Dory. All right, now I got to convert to exponential. So the 2 is going to come over and pick up the y. I'm so sorry. Drop off, leaving the x plus 1. Then subtract the 1. So 2 to the y minus 1 equals x. Now I go to my t-chart. 2 to the negative 1 minus 1. 2 to the 0 minus 1 and two to the first minus one. This is so much less complicated now that I think of it. Good. Okay. Yeah. I mean, hope, I mean, I was hoping the goal would be to get to that point. LNs are rough because you're approximating and yada, 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 you know. The E. The yep. E is what it tends to be. Why does E start now? E is just like it's three. I was going to say, I'll work through it and then I'll skip to that one, yeah. Yeah, so it's negative one half, zero, and one. So now I have my grid. <laughs> and I have a negative one is my vertical asymptote. So negative one half, negative one, zero, zero, one, one. So what's my domain, Audrey? Okay, your domain is negative one infinity. Good. What's your x intercept? Your x intercept is zero zero. Good. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm getting it. I don't know if we could survive another day like this, but it seems to be clicking at the end. It's because, okay. Whatever, whatever combination's happening there, I don't know if we want to try it again, but it might work. <laughs> this is just making me like normal, but like you, very dizzy and loopy. You sound like um, a mad scientist. Yeah. It's like I'm functioning like I would off any meds, but also like I'm on a lot of meds. Yeah. <laughs> The end result is good. It's the way you're going about it that's crazy today. The yeah. The way I go about it, like the yeah. way when I try to do my homework and explain it to Madison to teach her lessons, she gets very lost. Cause I can't imagine why. Yeah. So <laughs> when my brain clicks, it yeah. just doesn't make sense. There are teachers like that. Like I call them mad science scientist teachers. They like, but they're very smart. Okay, wait. Juliana had asked me. Let me do. Go ahead. Give me yours. Mine. Yeah. In parentheses or not? No. Okay, so first thing I would do is move the three. Okay. But then that negative can't stay there either. So I would multiply or divide everything by negative one. So you can't convert into exponential if there's something on the front of the log or something adding or subtracting at the end. Oh, okay. So it becomes part of your exponent. So five picks that whole thing up. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Vertical asymptote is still zero because there's nothing in parentheses. But this is going to change direction. So base or change? Mm -hmm. So you have to take the three, move it over, and then multiply everything by 
I mean, it doesn't really matter in which order you do that. If you would multiply by negative one, you would just have to multiply the y and the three by negative one. Okay. That would be the only catch. Okay. So then it's five negative. Wait, so does the five change at all? The five doesn't change. No. So this becomes positive one plus three, five to the fourth. It's just huge. Was that 625? Yeah. Can we do the ones with the LNs for the rest? The ones we already did, do we? Like do them again or do one from the homework? If you see ln, change it to log base 3. Unless you have a calculator and it is exact that you're going to use e. Just use 3. Mm -mm. Wait, is this 625 with a negative 1 or the positive 3? Oh, yeah. Wait, yeah. Wait, so the quiz there's going to be no calculator or there is a calculator? Did I reverse that? No, that's right. But it's negative, negative one. Oh. Because it's negative y. Oh. This so, one. I what? So negative, negative is positive. Correct. So on the quiz, it's no calculator. Correct. So no big number. Correct. Hey, I like 